All right, so we're just going to take our cube, press X and delete it, Shift A, add a plane. And with our plane, we're just going to select these first two points and just control click mark in order to place a bevel modifier on it. And we could press two in order to set it to the default of 0.5 and be sure to give it about six segments will be good. And since we're still in edit mode, we can move this adjacent edge over to basically elongate the shape. And from here, let's just take this moment to apply visual geometry to mesh. In my time with geometry, I know for a fact that there's always a double at the convergence points of two bevels. So I always grab that extra point and just dissolve it to make my life easier for later. From here, let's press I and inset. And with our inset, we now have basically quarantined the basic exterior of our shape and we can now get to work on the inside. So I am just going to look at this in top view and orthographic and we'll select our interior face and just bring up dice v2 and we'll press v to go into view dice and we want to make sure that we have a sufficient amount of sections happening up and down but also we want to have something happening in the middle because we're definitely going to be playing off the center but while the first setting that i had it on at three looked like it was probably good something like six is probably a little more optimal for our needs so let us go ahead and just click and apply from here we might as well just help these near vertices make it home. So I'm just going to shift click mark and we could just press M to go to merge tool where we can just use gravitate in order to just kind of consolidate some areas by either just dragging points or just clicking to bring them there space bar to complete the operation. Since I still have mesh machine enabled for edit mode, I can press alt X and gesture over to mirror on the X. And so now let us begin making some circles. So, we actually got a little overzealous there. So I'm just going to grab our vertices. And I see that we also got really overzealous with the amount of points that we added for this example compared to previous ones, but let's see if we can make it flow. I'm just going to shift click circle. And here you see all these circle points converging and is causing some of the circles to come in a little bit differently in scale. And that's part of the difference between our built-in circle solution and the one that we have that was previously powered by loop tools, like nothing special. I just find it to be really trippy and I do enjoy it. Like the moment I saw it, I was like, that's really cool. Let's make sure that we keep that, that's special. You know, that's one of a kind. And that is, that's, it's got moxie. So let us just press E, extrude, press I again in order to inset. And so this is what we're dealing with. So let's Alt X bisect mod because I'm not planning to talk about the other side. And from here, I can tell you that the next 25 operations I'm gonna be doing are probably joined. So let us just shift click mark and let's just press J to jump to join. And we're just gonna begin making our connection. So as I've done this over and over in preparation of this, I've thought about how it would be nice to have a very linear knife as part of join, but that's a talk for another day. But you know, a lot of testing goes into the evolutions of these tools. And so sometimes it's that 1 million in one time that just drives me nuts. And I'm like, you know what? This is getting a task designed on it and I can't stand to do it another day which makes me rather passionate about having it done because there's just some things that are just so repetitive that it's just not worth doing again. And one of them is selecting two points and pressing J over and over, but that at least gives us a good starting point where I can just, let's also give this a loop of protection, which I don't know what happened to, actually I do know what happened. This is where we bring up knife, press C, E, 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 E. And the tool's been discussed that should aim to solve this particular conundrum when it arises. But every time I experience this, I think about, you know, how it could be done just a little bit faster, just a little bit better. So let us get our loop back in continuity. And I feel like I should have one more series of dots happening right here, but I just don't think that the shape is going to be compatible with it. But if we look at this, we see that, you know, for the most part, we have pretty much solved this thing to a sufficient resolution. I mean, we could be all serious about having only quads by forcing everything to be exactly quads, but really we just need it to be 
quad enough for us to survive this operation. Just so I can get to the fun part of talking about DCAT because the tools that we talk about so much for Boolean operations also have their uses whenever it comes to subdivision workflows. Here I am doing this operation that just should not even be a thing anymore. Like I feel like as part of our multi-tools we should just have a loop insertion kind of knife, knife combo tool. But like I say, that's a talk for another day. So we're almost done with our setup, but you know, we just want to make sure that we got this set up pretty nicely so we don't have to revisit this. So two tries make a quad, at least that's what I'm always thinking. And we're also going to shorten this dramatically. It's been a ponder of mine as well. But yes, we definitely want to shorten this down substantially. We'll bring this in like so. And so if we look at our flows, we see that, you know, for the most part, everything has almost been solved. And for the most part, whenever it comes to subdivision, we won't have anything to worry about there. So without further ado, let us just shift deduplicate this, just hide a version before we go through all this crazy business and we'll press Q O T. And with two shape brought up, we're just going to jump over to decap where we could press X and then X in order to change our axis. So if we press D, we can also hide the original one. And if we press C, we can enable array caps. So I'm just going to hold control and we're just going to laser our section over where we are, hold shift in order to be fine with it. And just like that, we now have a decap arrayed version and it looks exactly like the original mesh, which is the best part. But even better is we can now roll the wheel and we see that it adds to our count. However, we have a slight problemo. And that is that our original geometry isn't completely congruent with what we're about to be giving it. So this is something we will need to resolve and we probably should have actually resolved it sooner. So let's press X and delete this. Let's also go in the outliner and just delete what we created with our decap. One of these meshes is not the real one. All right, so let's get in and just fix this because it's easier for us to do it before we actually convert it, but just showing you that, you know, these sort of problems happen to everyone, especially me. But the fact that we could even be talking about lopping and decapping is just a miracle unto itself like these were all things that were once written down and said you know i don't think anyone's gonna be able to pull these off but if they could it would definitely make my life a lot easier and here we are experiencing them not making life easy just kidding life is totally easier the work outside of having these even exist would just be non-existent so let's try it again Q O T and we see that we're already locked down. We're already right where we left off because Loof, the guy behind it, is not messing around. We click and we're done. So from here, let's just array and we see that they all come out equal distance apart, but we're not playing around. So let's put a weld at the end and just roll it up just one click and that should do us. And from here, if we add a subdivision to it, we can press Alt V and get out of the wireframe. And this is basically what we're looking at so far. So we still have the versatility of being able to adjust account in the event that we're placing this inside of the top of a coffee maker. But just like that, we are able to create an endless array decap mesh that is subdivision capable. And if we wanted to get even more special with it, you know, because there, there's always more, right? Let's delete the mesh. Let's get rid of these, delete. Alt H, bring back the original mesh. And we just want to go and just get down to the nitty gritty of our solution. So I'm thinking that we turn on Verdi Mergy and we just uh, have a consolidation party happening because there really is no need for all this excess geometry. It's just redundant. And seeing it on the edges is just going to make, make that part even more painful. Also, I'm not the biggest fan of actually seeing uh, terminations happen on corners that look like that. I would rather have something like that happen, where at least that is quadded out, and then we can 
do the same thing here, except we can't dissolve this. If we dissolve it, it collapses it. So instead you have to select both faces and press F in order to face it. So just one of those things sometimes, and you know, when we really look at this, we can't actually go with what we're proposing here as much as I would like to because of the whole decap situation. So let us just perform knife and shame and regret because, you know, we tried to um, usurp what we had going on and it just isn't going to allow us to do that. In fact, we would have had it decapping a little weird were we to have continued with that. So, you know, sometimes I just have a premonition like uh, when you're driving behind a log truck on the uh, highways. But anyways, let us press QOT and we're right where we left off. We see that every time we go through this iteration, it's easier than ever. But now we actually have a consolidation happening on the edges that just makes it a lot easier for us. So if we want to progress this to the next level, we could always just go in, apply the array, grab the boundary, extrude it down, place a boundary loop of protection, and we're ready to slap this in our coffee maker. Of course, we also want to set it smooth and not have any auto smooth present when dealing with subdivision, just for me, but just like that, we have created the second shape.